So I've been nerding out pretty hard on Diablo 4's spaghetti mess of mechanics and how things work under the hood. And uh, I'm happy to say I've basically solved or mostly solved to within like 1% or 2% of the real formula armor and how that works. And I even made a calculator and I'll show that to you in a few minutes and I'll show you how to use it. The point of this video is to give the community a very succinct, easy to understand, minimal to no math, straightforward explanation of the armor formula and how you can apply it yourself so you don't need to just follow somebody else when season one comes out. You can just know it and do whatever you want and go forth and, and you can share this with anyone else who's confused as well. All right, here's how it works. It's very simple. There's no quantum physics or whatever involved. The maximum amount of incoming damage that can be reduced by armor is 85%. You probably know this already. You need about 100 armor to reach this maximum 85% reduction. That's the first component, and that doesn't change for you as the defender. That's always true, no matter what. But of course, you actually need way, way, way more than 100 armor. So what's going on? A core mechanic of this game that's hidden, maybe it shouldn't be hidden, but it is, it's hidden right now and it's a core mechanic, is that as something levels up, it gains innate armor penetration on any damage that it does. There are two components to this. The first is just a straight flat armor reduction. Just take it away. A level one enemy already starts with around 50 of this flat armor piercing, so at level one, they, they're going to subtract your armor by 50, so you no longer need 100, you need 150 armor to hit 85%. By level 8, this goes up to 200 flat penetration. So that 150 armor that you had at level 1 that was super good and giving you 85% damage reduction, well, it's like negative 50 now because level 8 enemy is going to subtract it by 200, so that you get basically nothing. Even if you were to increase your armor by another 50, you'd still only have zero, which is, again, basically nothing. It isn't until you get another 50 where you'll be over that hump and finally getting armor gains. This is why stacking a lot of armor is good, because that first bit before you've even gotten through the flat reduction is essentially worthless. Only after you have enough armor to get above that is where you start getting good returns. On top of this flat reduction, there's also a percentage reduction. So for example, an attacker might have 500 flat armor penetration, and then anything left over will get cut by 50% because in addition, they have a 50% damage penetration value. So both the flat and the percent armor increase as an attacker levels up. So, you know, 500 flat and 50% might eventually go up to like 1,000 flat and 75%. Those aren't real values. I'm just giving you easy numbers to, to conceptualize it. And that's pretty much it. You understand how armor works. It's as simple as that. There's this flat cut that you need to overcome before your armor starts really doing its thing. And after that, your damage reduction goes up at some rate that gets slower as you fight against higher and higher level attackers. Te technically, for those who care, it's not actually a straight line, but it's a smooth curve. It's some strange compound function thing that makes the transition smooth. But for general understanding, just think about it as these two straight lines concepts I've explained. I've intentionally put a lot of emphasis on saying attacker and emphasizing that it's the attacker's level that matters because that is the only level that in fact matters. And here's where I debunk a pretty popular myth that there's some comparison between the attacker's level and the defender's level. Like you get a penalty versus monsters that are higher level than you or something. This is not true. The defender's level, your level does not matter. A level one character with 5,000 armor, if that were possible, will take the exact same amount of damage as a level 100 character with 5,000 armor. Some other people have tested this and verified this as well, but I checked myself personally. I took a level 60 rogue into a level 80 dungeon, so that's plus 20 levels, quite a lot, and I took a level 100 barbarian into that exact same dungeon instance. If there was a level difference, penalty, or bonus, and if it mattered, we would definitely see a difference here. I also matched up their damage reduction values, so everything is exactly the same, same armor, except uh, I couldn't get the rogue perfect, so the rogue actually has like an extra 4% damage reduction. 
So actually, in theory, the level 60 rogue should take slightly less damage, about 4%, than the level 100 barbarian. And yes, this is exactly how it turned out. The rogue took about 4% less damage as expected, despite being 20 levels below the content, and the barbarian being 20 levels above the content. There are other tests, like I've said, that other people have done, and they're good, and they're correct, so this is virtually 100% confirmed. So why does it feel like you take so much more damage when things get to be too high of a level? It's not because of armor or a damage penalty or anything like that, it's because of your HP. Look at the HP of my Barbarian. Now look at the HP of my Rogue. It is totally different. Life in Diablo 4 scales exponentially. For context, this Rogue leveling from 59 to 60 gained about 40 life. The Barbarian going from level 99 to level 100 got over a thousand life. Just one level over a thousand life gain from one level versus the 40 that the, that the Rogue got. Your life seems to scale kind of with your total experience, so 20 levels can way more than double your life. Monster damage also scales exponentially with your life, so it isn't like some sort of a forced penalty, it's just that damage and life scales exponentially, so the further away from your level you get, the monster damage becomes exponentially larger compared to your health pool. So what does this mean? Armor to the moon, baby. Stonks. Yes, armor is very good, but not always. It's not 100% to the moon all the time, especially for Sorcerer. Especially, especially with Season 1, everyone will have a 750 less armor because you won't be running skulls in your jewelry. Here, I'll show you how to use this calculator that I made now, and I'll give you an easy example, show you how to apply it. It's quite simple. You just click the link in the description, and you make a copy of the spreadsheet, and this is what you should have. There's only really a couple parts of this. You just need to put in the attacker's level. So let's say you're doing a Nightmare Dungeon and the monsters are level 123. One, two, three. And you have, we'll say, 6,000 armor. It tells you 31 damage reduction, 31% damage reduction. It's that simple. It just tells you what it is. Now, in big red letters here, it says all values are approximation, likely within 1% to 2% of in-game values. That's because, like I mentioned before, there's a weird compound proprietary function thing that Blizzard is using, which is impossible to perfectly backwards engineer. So this is a approximation, a very close approximation, but still an approximation. And I specifically tuned the calculator to um, underestimate your damage reduction. That way, you know, if, I, if I'm level 100 and I put in 9200 armor this should normally be 85 percent it's slightly underestimating so if it's off it's going to be off by too low this is because if uh if you think you have 85 percent damage reduction but you actually have 87 percent, that's fine you still get your full damage reduction maybe you have a little bit of extra armor but it's it doesn't matter if you think that you have 85 percent damage reduction but you actually have like 83 or 82 percent damage reduction well now you're actually taking significantly more damage you don't want that so I try to tune it to be above. That way, if it says 85%, you are nearly guaranteed that it's going to be 85%. Outside of this uh, bad range of values that uh, I don't have enough data for, so it needs to be fixed at some point. But they're within 3% instead of 1% or 2%. All the other ranges are uh, work properly, though. Now, generally, because of that flat damage reduction I told you about uh, before, the more armor you have, the better armor is. So like if I only have 2,000 armor, I have like no damage reduction. If I add another 2,000 to it, okay, well, I gain some. If I add another to it, then I gain quite a bit. And then if we just add 3,000 more on top of this, then, oh, wow, we're almost at max, right? So armor gets better the further away you escape from that flat damage reduction. And when you do have a lot of armor, armor is very good and very strong. Like here, if I have 9,000 armor, and there's an additional little tool here that I'll show you in a bit. If I just add 300 armor, then I've gained 20% EHP. That's amazing. 300 armor for 20%, I'll take it any day. But when your armor is much lower, you get like nothing from, from 300 armor. You only get 4%. And especially because everyone's armor will be so much lower in season one, uh, I see some people saying, oh, well, now it's even more important to stack armor. No, it's the opposite. It's actually less important. Some classes 
probably don't want to get any armor. I just want to leave you with one practical example to show you uh, how you can actually use this tool for your own character. So I brought up a sorcerer here. This is like a just a plain old regular season zero meta ice shards sorcerer. It has 5896 armor. So let's just put that in 5896 armor. And let's say that we're doing a relatively, you know, end game nightmare dungeon. So I put in 120, level 120 for the attacker level. Only 32% damage reduction. Not not super great, but maybe more armor would be good. Let's say we're thinking about our pants here. Our pants right now, we have damage reduction from close enemies, damage reduction, and damage reduction from enemies that are burning. Um, we don't want to have distant enemies. We just want to maximize our, our like, HP, our, our EHP. So we basically have two options. We have life, which we can get 1,300 life, or armor, where we can get 10.9% armor. Well, if we click on the armor, our armor went up. If you just subtract the values, uh, I'll tell you that our armor went up by 582. So we just got 582 more armor. What did that do for us? Well, let's put it in here, 582. Not bad. It gives us 8% EHP. But that's also not great because if we put health instead, if we put life instead, then 1,300 life is like 13% more life. This could change if you have a barrier, if you have ice armor up, but to keep the math simple, we'll just call it 13% and you, know, you can use your own discretion for your own character. So we have the option between 13% more if we take life or only 8% more if we take the armor. In this case, the armor is not good. Well, I mean, it's not the worst, right? Like it still would be decent to take, but ideally if you had to choose, you would take the life over the armor if you were like re-rolling this gear, for example. But I mean, uh, but something to consider is that everyone runs disobedience. So if we're at max disobedience stacks, then maybe we can pump our armor up to, or like not max, but if we have a lot of disobedience stacks, maybe we have 8,000 armor instead, in which case the armor gets better because remember the more armor you have, the better armor gets. So... Here we'd be getting 13%, which is just equal to taking life in the first place, except life works all the time, and this only works when you are pumped up with the aspect. But with Season 1 coming, if we decide to not, to actually run the Season mechanic so we don't run skulls in our jewelry, we're going to lose 750. So if we only had this much armor, well, the armor gets even worse. And if disobedience gets nerfed, which is very likely, if disobedience gets nerfed, then th that's going to be lower too. Like if it gets cut in half, then we'd only have 6,500 armor or something like that. So pretty strictly worse than life. So what's the moral of the story? What's the easy takeaway? Only prioritize armor if you are confident that you can stack a lot of it. And if you need to check, use this calculator to, to double check if the armor you're getting is worth it for the content that you're doing. Now, if you're doing lower level content, then this would be amazing. So essentially, if you're a class that can stack a lot of armor, you have a lot of armor, you're near the cap already, you're trying to reach the cap, armor's amazing, totally get armor. If you're not, if you're a sorcerer and you only have like 5,000 armor or like 4,000 armor, and you aren't confident that you can get enough to become a critical mass, then armor is not good. And you should go for life, you should go for damage reduction, you should go for pretty much anything that except for armor. Like it's a very all or nothing thing. You either go all armor or no armor. I think I've pretty much explained everything about armor. I think that I've left you with the knowledge and tools to go into the next season and totally just be able to do your own thing and understand how your character works without needing to like follow a guide or anything. So um, I hope that it was uh, helpful. If you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to them. I hope you all have a wonderful day.